Welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills. I'm your host, Don Moraney, and this is our special segment called the Wealth Zone University. And as you know, the purpose of the Wealth Zone University is to change your mind about money so you can change your financial future. In this segment, which we are again going to call Straight Talk, it's continuing the three series that we've had previously where we talk about our mantra, the real secrets of money. We've delved into savings, which is the first real secret of money and probably the most critical in the last two sessions. This session we're going to talk about after you begin to save and have a savings program, how you can make sure that you, one, don't lose any money, protect the money that you're saving, and two, begin to make that money work for you. So in this segment and the segment to follow, we're going to follow up on the remaining criteria in the real secrets of money. And again, those four criteria are save, begin to save aggressively, protect the money that you save by making sure that you put them in products where you cannot lose your money, Re grow so that you have a respectable return on that money that you're accumulating, and finally maximize, which means that we make sure that we minimize the income tax on that money as we put it away. All those things put together are the simple way for us to begin to build financial security. You can do it. I can do it. We're going to do it together, so let's start. In our last segment, we had a challenge. I challenged you to determine exactly how much you were going to put away every payday, every month, and I would do the same. And at the end of the year, we'd hold up our bank statements and we'd see who had achieved their goals. So I've opened a bank account and I'm going to put in $100 a payday. So at the end of the year, I'm going to have my bank statement and I'm going to challenge you to have your bank statements and we're going to compare, okay? So hey, the best way to save start a savings program if they have friends save with you. We're friends, so let's get this started, okay? Oh, by the way, I've already put in my $200 for January. Are you guys caught up? I'm gonna check. It may take me 12 months to find out, but I'm gonna check, okay? So let's get started. The second aspect of the real secrets of money after we begin to save and all the programs that we talked about last week about how to save, how much to save is to make sure that you protect the money that you put away. So let me back up a second before we go to protect too much and let's talk about two things. You have to make sure that you have enough money saved and liquid before you start putting money into something that's gonna have a long-term um, impact. What do I mean by that? If you begin to put your money into CDs, if you begin to put your money into more aggressive vehicles where that money has to sit a while, and where you may be penalized for taking it out, then it's important for us to make sure that we've got enough money available to us in case of emergencies, in case of other things that we can't think of. And what I call that money is liquid money. Liquid money, in my mind, is money that you can get access to anytime that you want to. It may not be working as hard and making as much money as it could in another program that's protected, but it still doesn't cost you anything to get it back in an emergency. So how much should that be? Well, the rule of thumb has always been between three to five paychecks, two to three months of, of expenses, whichever um, is easier to calculate for you. But I like to go a different route. I like you to think about if you did not have a job, if you got laid off, if you got hurt, how long would, would you be able to survive um, off the money that you saved or how long would you need to survive off the money you saved? So think about this. If you've got a disability policy with your employer, the chances are that disability policy has a waiting period. It might be 30 days, it might be 60 days, it could be longer. Normally because the longer the disability waiting period, the less cost of the policy. If you've got that kind of policy with your employer, I recommend that you go and check and see what that waiting period is. And then add another 30 days. So let's assume that you've got a disability policy you have to wait 30 days before you qualify for the policy, and then you have to wait another 30 days after you qualify to get that first check. That's 60 days. That's how much liquid cash you need to have available in some kind of savings account. Um, again, that's just one, one way of figuring it out, but it's an easy way of figuring it out. If you don't have a disability policy for your employer and you're self-employed and you don't have a disability policy, then you need to call us because that's a no-no. But if you don't have a disability policy, another way to figure that out is how much um, you make every payday or every 
two paydays if you get paid twice a month, add those two together, and then come up with what you think is going to be an amount that's going to be very important for you to be able to put your hands on at any point in time, okay? But remember that phrase, it, liquid. You have to have enough liquid assets or liquid cash so that you're not penalized for using your own money in case of an emergency. Good. So let's get back to protect. We've been telling you that you do not have to lose money in order to make money. Um, why is that so new? Why is that so novel? Well, it isn't. But it hasn't been attractive. And Wall Street does not make money off of savings. And in order for you to become investment minded, then um, the mindset had to be that you got to make a lot of money on your money. The thing that's been really silent is the risk that you take of losing your money while you're out there chasing these amazing gains. And so what we're advocating is that you need to have your money available to you. You need to know that your money's going to be returned. What you trade for that assurance is a little bit of the gains that you may have made if everything was equal. But it's always more important to know that your money's going to be there, your money's coming back to you, than to chase high returns. And that's what we're talking about here. Primary vehicle for that is something called a fixed product fixed investment product. Well, actually a fixed savings product because we're not talking about investments anymore. And so what are these things? Um, we're all familiar with bank CDs. Uh, if we don't have one, you should be talking to your bank about it. We're also familiar with things like um, bonds. Bonds are debt vehicles that are issued by governments, that are issued by corporations. These two kinds of things have always been around. They're also fixed uh, annuities and also fixed types of insurance. But the two most common ones that you probably know about are certificates of deposit and bonds. Savings bonds that the government issues all the time, the series E's, uh, things that we all are aware of. So how do these things work? Why are they considered to be fixed? Why are they considered to be protection for your money? First, all of these vehicles guarantee that whatever money you put in there, you're going to get back regardless of what happens to the economy, regardless of what happens to your stock market, regardless of what happens to investments. I mean, that alone is probably the main feature that we are advocating that you consider. That if you put $100 in there, no matter what happens around the world, your $100 is going to still be there and available to you. The second thing that these products offer you is that while your money's there, for the use of your money, there's going to be a return in earnings, on interest, whatever you want to call it, given back to you, which will help then help your money to grow. So essentially, your money's going to be there, and then someone else's money is going to be placed on top of that uh, to reward you for the use of that money. Those are fixed vehicles. Um, normally in fixed vehicles, the return is relatively low um, because the, the bank, the insurance company, the annuity company is dictated, uh, governed by probably the state that they can only invest in certain kinds of vehicles because they too cannot be extremely risky with the money that they are investing to make money for your portfolio. So what does that mean? It means they take the deposits of thousands of people, in the case of a bank, let's say, the deposits of a thousand people, they invest it very cautiously because the state has governed that they can only do um, so much risk. They make a return on it. They give you part of the return, and naturally they keep a part of the return. And historically, the return that they've been sharing with you has been relatively small. And so the downside of being in a fixed vehicle, tip theoretically, has always been that the return is low. The part that everyone is missing is that your money never gets lost. So compare that to the stock market, where you give your money to a broker, they take their money off the top, they invest it in something that's pretty aggressive. And yes, the potential for a larger return does exist. But the part that we need to be concerned about is that the potential for you losing some, a significant part, or even all of your money also exists. So we've been trading the safety of having our money there for the potential that our money can make a lot more money in an investment product than it could in a fixed product. Um, in 2008, we saw how that goes. Almost everything that we knew about investing did not work. 
And now that the stock market is coming back and people are not so afraid or not so close to that um, depression, recession, whatever it was called back then, they're beginning to move back into the stock market and forget about the fact that having your money is the most important thing. So again, to protect your money, you have to put it in a fixed product. Fixed products haven't always been attractive, but if you agree with us that having your money is more important than anything else, that's where it should be. So what gets more return than a CD? What could possibly give you a better return than a bond? Well, the two things that we advocate are these, fixed indexed products, mostly insurance and mostly annuities, provide you both the protection that you get in a traditional um, fixed product, but they also provide you the opportunity to get more respectable earnings than you would in a traditional fixed product without the risk that you would be exposed to if you were investing that money for those returns. So what does that mean? That simply means that you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have a guarantee that you're not going to lose your money and you can earn competitive interest rates um, inside of a fixed indexed product. So the key word now, the new word that we just introduced to you is indexed. What does that mean? In stock market language, indexing is when a group of stocks have been pre-selected and the performance of those stocks are used as an indicator of how well um, that segment of the stock market is doing. The one that we probably all know the very best is the S&P 500, the Standard & Poor's 500. When you watch the news, you see the tickle along the bottom saying the S&P has done this. When you hear the news, you always hear how well the S&P is doing or isn't doing, as the case may be. And so that's an index. The stocks inside of the, the uh, S&P 500 are a varied amount of stocks. They've been selected by Standard & Poor's to represent the entire stock market. In the case of the 500, there are 500 stocks that range from large cap to small cap and everything in between. In indexing, you're not actually picking your stock. You're not actually in the stock market. You're in an index that's mirroring what the Standard & Poor's 500 is doing. And that's the safety valve that allows you to have the kind of performance that a stock market index is enjoying but without having all the risk that investing directly in those stocks would potentially expose you, you and your money to. And so uh, we're going to talk about indexing a little bit more because we're going to put it together with the fix so that we can know exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about protecting your money. The indexing portion is going to be important for us to understand because after we talk about protecting your money, we're going to talk about compounding and growing your money, and that's when the indexing aspect of it applied to the interest inside of a fixed vehicle moves from being indexing to index crediting, which basically is the way that fixed vehicles give you the opportunity to have more respectable returns without any of the risk that you would uh, normally have inside of the stock market. So I know this stuff is really, really exciting to you. I know you've got your pe paper, you've got your pencil, you're on writing this down. So we're going to talk more about it in the next segment. What I want you to do right now is just remember two things for me, okay? One, you do not have to lose your money to make money. Two, there are products out there that have always been there that are available for us to make sure that we do not lose any money while we're trying to make our money work for us. There are also products out there that are kind of novel, that are being offered by the insurance and annuity companies that allow us to maintain that guarantee that we will not lose any money, but also allow us to now participate in what could possibly be an opportunity to get better returns than these fixed products have historically uh, been um, able to provide. And that combination of old protection and new um, opportunity are called fixed indexed products. We're going to talk more about those in a minute. If you've got questions, let us know. Call us, write us, email us, but we'll be right back. Don't change that dial. Don't change your mind. Bye. Hello, I'm Chase Slade, the coolest eight-year-old kid you will ever meet. My grandpa, Don, gave me so much money last year, my piggy bank could no longer hold one more dollar. 
He told me to watch Skills to Pay the Bills on Channel 10 and learn about the real secrets of money. Then he told me to watch e Egyptian Secrets on Channel 10 to learn how to stay healthy and well. You can be cool and healthy just like me by watching Skills to Pay the Bills and Rock Your Block on every week on Channel 10. Welcome back to Skills to Pay the Bills. Again, this is a special segment called Wealth Zone University. And what we're trying to do here is change your mind about money so you can change your financial future. We've been talking about the real secrets of money. And we've been delving in today about the protection aspect, which is the second element, because in the past uh, two segments, we've talked about savings. And uh, we need to make sure that you understand now that you started saving, what you need to do to make sure that those savings do not disappear. We've been talking about fixed vehicles, which are fixed savings vehicles. And we've said that bonds, CDs, certain types of insurance, certain types of annuities are fixed vehicles, and fixed vehicles guarantee that you will never lose your principal. It does not expose your principal to loss. So again, quick example, if you put $100 in 10 years ago, regardless of what happened to the stock market, regardless of what happens to the economy, regardless of happens, what happens around the world, it'll be there, even if the um, bank or the insurance company no longer exists. That guarantee is there. Why is that guarantee there? Because the state has requirements that each one of these entities, banks, insurance companies, and annuity companies, have to adhere to that guarantee that your money's going to be there. That's a good thing. But why don't I know about these? Why haven't they been told about this? Because these vehicles, historically, haven't provided really great returns. So in exchange for the safety, the guarantee that your money always will be there, you've normally sacrificed some of the money that you could have made on that same money in an investment vehicle. But again, from our perspective, having your money is much more important than chasing higher returns. So we've been talking about a new type of fixed product that still gives you the ability to have all of your money there always, guaranteed principal and interest, but then gives you ability to earn more respectable returns than historically have been associated with fixed vehicles. And these are called fixed indexed vehicles. And the indexing allows you to, how can I say, make more money by mirroring what's going on in the stock market without actually being in the stock market. That's done because the insurance product or the annuity product and most of those uh, products that we're going to be talking about in the fixed index segment are insurance and annuity products that's possible because these entities use the interest that you would ordinarily earn to mirror the index that you choose. The one we talked about earlier was the Standard & Poor's 500. And then you get the ability to have up participation in the upside uh, as the stock market or the index, excuse me, goes up without any of the exposure to the downside, losing the money if the index goes down. That's great, OK? So we've got those couple of things. So we talked a bit about making sure your money's liquid. So if you have money and you're putting into a savings account, where do you put it? Do you put it in a bond? Do you put it in a CD? Do you put it in a fixed index annuity? Do you put it in a uh, fixed index insurance? Liquidity means that you can get to your money without being penalized. And the best place to have your li liquid money is in a bank savings account until you get enough money to put it into a CD. There's a concept called laddering where you buy CDs with different maturity dates, which, which allows you then to have the exposure to having income protected, having a better return than you would in a savings account, but also having the ability to have exposure to sets of your money at set period of time so they're all, not all locked in. That's one aspect of being liquid. When you go into fixed index products, Liquidity becomes something that you have to plan for. So let me give you an example. Liquidity is something that you wouldn't have if you decided to invest in any annuity, fixed indexed annuity, fixed annuity, variable annuity, any annuity. Because in the early years of an annuity, in order to get your money back, generally, there is a cost for having that money given back to you. So that, in our mind, is not a, a good contribution to liquidity. Where annuity is good is when you're in retirement or near retirement age, and we say in, in the 10, 15 years that you're planning to, 
uh, next 10, 15 years that you're planning to retire, or you've already retired and you want to conserve your money and not lose any more money, an annuity is perfect for that if, again, there's liquid money that you have available that you can get access to in, in an emergency. So let's move annuities off the table in this discussion for another time. And let's talk about fixed indexed insurance. Insurance, not normally thought about as a liquid product, but if you have a permanent life insurance that has a cash value in it, and it's a universal product where you have flexibility of premium, you have the ability to build up the cash value faster and then have access to that through a loan. Um, certain loan provisions allow you to take that money out tax-free. That could be considered an, um, a liquidity provision. But again, you have to make sure that the product is structured properly so that you do have that liquidity. So that brings us, if we move that to the side also, just as an explanation, that brings us back to the bank and the CDs where we're making sure that we're saving, we're making sure that we're protecting the money, and we're making sure that we're building up that liquid amount that we talked about earlier, uh, whether it's um, by payday, whether it's by um, the number of, of months you have to wait to get a disability check, wh whether it's by expenses, whatever criteria you use, we need to make sure that we build up that liquid money and have it there for you. Once that liquid money is built up, then it's important for us then to take that money and move it into a fixed index product so that we can, one, maintain the protection that we had in the fixed product, but then begin to realize better return, better compounding on the money that we've built up so that we can then begin to earn more respectable returns on our money and make it work for us. So that's a lot of concepts in um, a two-segment period, but they're very important concepts because they speak to two of the main principles of the real secrets of money, and that's protecting your money and making it grow. And in our, our uh, opinion, we are definitely advocates for making sure that your money is always there. So realize that what we're saying is that savings is not investing. Investing is basically where you give your money to someone else, they um, try and get high returns, but the risk is that you could lose some significant portion or all of your money. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get you to put your money away, your hard-earned money away, for your future, for your children's future, for your retirement. We're trying to make sure that you understand that you do not have to lose that money in order to get good returns. So we're talking about putting in some kind of fixed vehicle where you have a guarantee that your money and your earnings are always going to be there. And we talked about those vehicles of bonds, bank CDs. When we move from banks, we're talking about insurance products, and we're all talking about annuity products in special situations like retirement where you don't need access to it. But we're also saying that in order to make sure that the traditional fixed product gives you a better return than you've traditionally been able to get, that you need to look at a fixed index product. And those products normally are in insurance products where we have fixed indexed uh, universal life called um, indexed universal life products and fixed indexed annuities. It's really important that you understand where the, the emphasis needs to be placed now after you begin to put your money away. Do not expose your money to unnecessary investment risks. Regardless of what you've been told, regardless of what uh, you read in the papers, regardless of what you see on the news, if your $100 is always there, that's $100 that you have never lost. When you are in a fixed product, they have um, a feature that's called um, reset. And reset means that after the, uh, let's say the period is a year, and you put in $100 and you earn $10 on that, when the year is over, they reset your minimum floor to that $110 floor, so your investment um, uh, base now is higher because it includes the money you put in plus the earnings that it had. And so that's really important for you to know because every time that floor increases, the amount of money that you get a return on is based upon that new floor. But also, that new floor becomes the amount that you cannot lose. That new floor becomes the amount that is guaranteed. And so in summing up, it's really important that you change your mind about how you're going to handle your money. 
And it's really important that you begin to realize that protecting your money, having a guarantee, making sure your money is always going to be there is the most important thing that we can do for ourselves. Secondly, after that, we need to look for a respectable return. And if you remember the term indexing, index crediting, and look for products that provide those features, then you will be able to invest in a product, excuse me, uh, put your money into a product that's going to mirror an, an index and give you a good return. Next week, we're going to talk about a little bit more. But right now, I just want you to make sure you do two things for me. Continue to save. Make sure that we set an amount. Remember, we've got a challenge going between the two of us. And as always, email us, call us. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you talk about. Next week, we're going to have a guest. Um, we're going to get back into the infotainment. Um, but periodically, we'll be back with Straight Talk. We look forward to seeing you really soon. Be careful and save a lot.